Folks, how's everybody doing? So every once in a while, we have a release that kind of does this kind of bizarre, how do I say it? Where the Wildsville Drain box, collector box and set comes out. And as we approach release, it's flat and quiet. But then the single cards start saying, oh, everyone's going to buy singles. They're just game pieces, right? And um, suddenly, all of a sudden, uh, we're having a situation where stores are ordering less collector boxes. And um, TCG Player still has a pretty nice little sell-through rate every day. Not record, you know, Lord of the Rings shattering. But pretty stable sales. Quantity of stores and people pre-selling right now are pretty, I'd say, close to average. Maybe slightly below the quantity of sellers and this again tells me that stores are ordering less they're afraid they're tired of losing money and we are going to continue to go into a situation where wildsville drain comes out and let's talk about the collector box and i think this is one of those situations like the pyrexia collector box where it comes out around that 200 dollars price point and post release we're probably going to get a little bump up in price after release day um, if the singles hold up better than we thought. Now, looking at these fairy tale, I don't know, do you want to call them masterpieces? Do we want to call them like uh, Kaladesh inventions? Do we want to call them lottery cards? Do we want to call them Strixhaven Mystical Archive style things? Uh, so looking at these anime girls and anime waifu, wafu, waffles, and um, some of these cards are pretty expensive. And um, they seem to be pretty uh, sought after. And assuming that these cards drop 30 to 50, 60%, even if they stabilize at half the price of where they are, these cards are pretty expensive. This is not a three, four, five hundred dollar premium product. This is a normal, standard release. And if history has shown us anything, sets that have a mystical archive style card ish, or some people just say the anime tax, um, they tend to do pretty well. Like, you know, we're only about, what, 18 months? Maybe technically 12 months? Let's call it 18 months. It's what, Strixhaven? Collector boxes really went out of print and disappeared and everything. Um, and, you know, those are holding up and doing really, really well. They're, it's one of the least amount of sealed product collector boxes left in the market. And it's still quite sought after. And this feels like that to me. But now we also have the uh, Throne of Bell Drain lore and that fairy tale thing that everybody loves. And, you know, I, I'm i looking at patron feedback and feedback from you all, and people are pretty happy with this. Again, I, I remain a little, a little skeptical to see what happens here, but if the supply was left alone, which it looks like it, and we have these kind of these expensive chase cards and these collector boxes, and I, I, what are we calling them? A fairy tale foils? They're not surge foils. Swirly foil, swirly foils. You know, I I don't know how these things are gonna hold up because again, everybody seems kind of diluted and kind of eh, with specialty things. But the market and the sale through rates and people wanting the product seems to be okay. And I'm very surprised to see some of these pre-sale prices on these single cards and these waifu wafu girls and um, some of these little anime stuff is it's you know it, I mean. Like, like patrons were sending me messages, Rudy. Look at doubling season. It just got reprinted in a master set. I know, I know. Set boxes for the commander masters like 400, 350, 320, down to 300, down to 280. And they're finally stabilizing at what 280 to 300 range. I mean, what? So what stores pay? 320s. So even if you're a store, you sell a box in TCG player for 280. What are you gonna net? 250. You paid 320. 30% loss and what? Within 60 days of release. So, uh, this just reminds me of a release cycle where every so many releases we have a product comes out. Kamigawa Collectors did it. Phyrexia Collectors did it. I think Brothers War Collectors did it. I can't remember. Um, I know Streets of Barry Manilow did not do it. I know March of the Machine did it, I think. I think March of the Machine came out. At like 2, 205, then immediately popped to like 220s, 230s, and I think right now it's back to maybe like 200. I, I, it's it, the kind of it's very interesting to watch the movement depending on the product. But again, right now, I mean, to be able to get you know Wildsville Drain for like 210 with tax and shipping shipped, that seems pretty good to me. 
that seems pretty fair. I know a lot of y'all are just going to laugh and bash below about, oh, I'm just going to wait for the Amazon dump when it's free. Um, it's possible. It's definitely possible. We have Black Friday a couple months away, and, you know, we got uh, Cyber Monday, Small Business Saturday, and Stepsister Thursday. I mean, it's it's possible. It's coming up. But I'd like to remind you all, I have, I'm still waiting for Amazon dumps for, you know, March the Machine, and, of course, Phyrexia Collectors to add to my positions, and I'm... Um, just kind of sitting here, twiddling my thumbs and balls, and I'm just not seeing it. So, Hasbro's at $72 a share. I'm getting a lot of messages on that all of a sudden. I think the stock has kind of moved quite a bit in quite a short period of time. It's very surprising. I didn't see that coming. Obviously, um, I've been buying Hasbro stock as high as the 80s. And as low as, I think the last time I bought was 46, and I think it hit a low of 45 before it turned. So, I'm up quite a bit now. That's kind of nice to see, but it just seems like it moved really quick. And I'm a little skeptical that Hasbro Wizards deserves that kind of move. I'm not really sure. It feels a little, I don't know, it feels a little quick. But I feel like a lot of people... I don't know, maybe it's because they realized Magic's not going to die, and maybe that was the, the, the price was tanking so much because they thought Magic was going to die. I'm not really sure, man. Um, I, I just want to... I, I, this video really... I don't want to go off track too much here, but i just really surprised to see how expensive cards even like Doubling Season are after they just got reprinted. And they've been in what? Secret Lairs? Commander Masters? And I see this flashy version in this anime version of doubling season in this flashy full and I'm like it's our it's three four hundred dollars even if it settles at half that which I think it will I think it drops 50% but even if it settles at one to two hundred dollars and these super chase cards are you know fifty to a hundred dollars a card that's a really big deal because those those are big lottery tickets man if the average one of these cards still holds a thousand a hundred dollars a card these aren't thousand dollar boxes these are $200 boxes, and whenever you can get a card that pays for either half or an entire box, and then all the other cards is just pure syrup and profit, that's that gets a lot of attention. And now we factor in stores aren't doing mass box openings. I don't know anyone who's mass opening um, Magic sets anymore at all. And, you know, and I've been trying to say to everybody for a long time, this mentality of just buy the singles you want, if... Everybody, if all these layers in the ecosystem stop doing mass box openings, stop doing singles, these singles are going to get more expensive because people don't want to do the boxes. It's, it's such a double-edged thing, man. Because there is a point where it's like, okay, if a collector box is 200 bucks, let's just say 200 even, let's say it drops more, 200 bucks with tax and shipping out to your door. If a collector box is $200, and there's a bunch of $5, 10 $20 cards, and then you have a chance for a hundred two dollar card. That teeter totter of risk reward is pretty attractive and in line of where it should be. If you're a store and you buy five hundred collector boxes, and let's say your cost basis is I don't know one eighty or even number, it's probably it could be like one probably like one seventy five. But let's just say one eighty is your cost basis. Okay, I'm on at one eighty is a store cost. If there's that many cards of value, in every so many packs or boxes, you're hitting a hundred dollar plus card. This gets a little interesting. It, this we we've been through this a couple times. Kamigawa was the most obvious with the neon ink. The Wizards tried to do it with Streets of Barry Manilow, with the uh, those really cool foils with like the golden mafia with the gold thing. Oh my god, it was so cool! But the market rejected that and it fell apart. And then of course, Brothers War serialized cards, Marshall Machine serialized cards and um phyrexia i could oh i guess phyrexia did phyrexia have serialized cards i don't even remember but the phyrexia did really well also like all these products tend to have some gimmick i don't know well, maybe not gimmick they tend to have some lure of something special and i don't know this this particular release reminds me of the strixhaven collector boxes that's what it reminds me of and if that is the case you know Stores paying 175 to 180, and 
retail anybody out there, any viewers or anyone can walk into your local store and buy these for two two ten. That seems like a fair price, man. I mean, you know, anti hype man Rudy is not really anti. I'm I'm kind of hype about that. I think that's a pretty good deal. So that's all I have to say today. I just want to comment about these just really expensive single cards. And I'll obviously uh, I'll be running my big uh, launch for Wildsville Drain Collectors the next 24 hours from whenever they watch this video Friday night, and uh, I'm on the hook for you know five, six, seven thousand boxes, whatever the final number is, probably somewhere in the middle there. Uh, and I'll be very interesting to see even selling these at like the best price in the country and offering patrons really cheap pricing from like the 170s, 180s, 190s, depending how many boxes you want. That's shipped to your door. No hidden Rudy fees. I'm very curious how many people are going to be excited like I am. Obviously, we'll do some box opening starting next week, but uh, keep in mind there's going to be a small delay. It, whether you buy it from me or any TCG player or any store online, keep in mind Monday is a holiday in the United States, so uh, there is not going to be any mail. Uh, freight trucks and this distribution is going to be a little delayed, so keep in mind things are going to feel a little slower this release due to that holiday on Monday. I think that's it, folks. Mostly just want to share everything with you all. I'm very curious how this product does, though. I feel like this one, I, I, I don't know. This really reminds me of Strixhaven. And I just I, I just feel like for, you know, 2 two ten shift, it's just, even because I always try to view it from like a regular person's point of view of paying two two ten. Not the idiot Timmy who walks into your local Walmart or Target and pays outrageous pricing so your cost is like two fifty three hundred dollars a box and you're buying individual packs for some stupid idiot. Don't do that, please. That's so that's such a waste of money. Um, but the normal people who are paying two two ten, not Rudy pricing, not you know Bezos penis rocket pricing, just normal. Two two ten still feels really good. It feels better than paying you know three four hundred for a set box of Commander Masters. Um, I guess for the end of the video, one uh, one other comment to you all. Um, it looks like I think I have this deal going through. So in the next thirty forty five days. Um, I think uh, we are going to be moving forward with this Commander Masters uh, set boxes and draft. I'm finally going to have my first shipment of Commander Masters draft and set. Um, per the agreement, I can't disclose the pricing of anything, but um, it's phenomenal. And uh, we're going to do a really special thing for the patrons. I know you guys will really like that. So, um, And then also, uh, probably in the next uh, couple weeks here, whenever I get a Sunday night that's a little... Easy on the schedule, probably coming up. Maybe this Sunday night. If I don't, is there a release this Sunday? Maybe not. I think this might be a good Sunday night. Um, I got a little one piece sale. I really want to try. I've got a couple cases from uh, like Romance Dawn, Paramount. Do I have Paramount War? And then we got the new one. I've got a lot of boxes of the new set. So I'm going to make a little variety. Uh, I'm going to test out the one piece market um, only because I have this one. Op it's just a test thing. I really don't have the scheduling to bring any new products or you know, onboard anything else, and on top of that, there's nothing else that I really want to bet money on or put any big gambling things on. I, I'm pretty pretty comfortable where I am going all in with the, uh, right now, like I said, I've still been focusing all in on the Pokemon, and um, make fun of me all you want, but I'm still adding to my magic positions. Um, I'm, I have a tremendous amount of collections from you all coming in, and uh, I'm pretty pumped about this Wild Develop Drain thing, man. I don't know, it, Throneville, I get, Throneville Drain was just such a fun it felt like such a good... It was 2019, even 2020 with Throne of the Drain. Which, again, was still COVID. Ugh, you know, can't put bleach on a black lotus. You know, 2019, 2020, Throne of the Drain was such a good product, man. It was such a well-received thing. I mean, the positivity, it was... It was. I look back at it, and it makes me go like this. People were so positive, I'm nervous. It was such a good time, man. And I, I feel like Wildsville Drain looks like it's going to be able to carry that torch. The lore... The cards, the fairy tale, the theme. And the only difference is this time around, they added like this anime slot. And I like it. I think it, it fits and feels good. Like when they did March of the Machine collectors, and we have all that multiverse and all these weird frames from, you know, Amon Kitty Cat invocations to Kaladesh masterpieces to all these, the multiverse. I mean, the March of the Machine collector boxes and pulling, like, it just felt like a mis mix mash. It just felt like a mess of product. But like, they took Throne of Eldraine, which was, and they took the lore, the style, and feel, and they just added an extra layer of anime kind of chase card series. And they didn't raise the price! I think, I don't know, man. I really, I think it's going to be pretty good. I, I feel better about that than I do like March of the Machine. 
And I was going to say better than the Phyrexia set, but everybody loved the Phyrexia set. That was such a fan favorite. I mean, I liked it, but again, it just... I wasn't a fan of some of the art style and everything, but this one, I don't know. It seems pretty cool, man. Um, and yes, obviously, obviously in the next 30 days, we got Flesh and Blood, we got Exclusive Rudy, Diamond Hands, we got Sorcery, we got Rudy's finally going to eat crayons from MetaZoo, custom foil exclusive thing. Um, is there a big white set? No, the Nazarak was already, oh, yeah, that's right, the, uh, the second and final reprint. Of the Sword Art Online. I'm supposed to get a, a pallet of that. Because I got a ton of people. And it's supposed to be that second wave of Sword Art finally showed up, I, I think. I got to check on that. And um, we'll talk more about Pokemon's craziness. And um, it's going to be a fun weekend, everybody. Beautiful world out there. Most people are great people. Do not let the negativity. Do not let the drama. The bad YouTube channels. The bad LGSs. The bad negative people that thrive on all that bad things and things going to hell. Life is short, and um, the older you get, the more you realize that, and um, make sure you spend it around people who are positive, make you happy, and even when you look, when you wake up on a Monday morning, you shouldn't have a case in the Mondays. You know you're doing something right when you wake up on a Monday, and you're excited to see what happens. It's how you know you're on the right path, and you got good people around you, and just in case you forget that, Here's a picture of my penis.